Welcome to the Mando Fan Show. We are live, and that means we're back, baby! Yes! There it is. <laughs> it it's really went for it. Time. <laughs> really went for that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I went the extra uh, <laughs> few seconds because we hit uh, 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I was a little more oomph. So I want to thank yes. everybody for uh, getting us over the hump. We did the Hey, can you help us out? We needed two more, <laughs> two subscribers, <laughs> and we got it. So we want to uh, welcome everybody to the Mando Fan Show. Uh, really, we did the gallery thing for the Mando Fan Show, but really it's been uh, about 10 months since uh, we did this show. Uh, obviously, the base looks similar to the Resistance broadcast. We actually had a whole crew come in and replicate the look of the Resistance broadcast base. Uh, There's for some the changes. Yeah. I added this. Yep. And this. Yep. Right. High quality production changes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I, I'm John. Uh, thanks, uh, James and Lacey with me as always. Guys, you excited? We're finally back. We did a lot of work behind the scenes to uh, get a live show of the Mando Fan Show going. Um, and, and now we're here doing it. How are you feeling? Feeling good? I'm definitely feeling good. I I mean, I don't know how many people notice, but like every one of our live streams has been like a little bit different when it comes to like the production <laughs> and what you're looking at on the screen and stuff like that. So I feel like we're starting kind of to reel it in and, and realize what we like uh, on the screen and how we like to present it and stuff. So like reeling in, reeling in a crate dragon. Yes, exactly. Like you got to shoot too the early. Spoiler alert. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, so yeah. If you're watching the Mando <laughs> fan show, I hope you watch the Mandalorian. <laughs> so let me check in with these guys first, and then I'll go watch the actual show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I I'm I'm pumped. So Lacey, hey, hey, how, how you feeling over there? Feeling good? Pumped? I'm good. I got my baby Yodas. Yeah. You got the shirt too. I got the baby Yoda shirt on. I'm good right. to go. We just we got off the live stream with Star Wars Explained, which was yeah. really fun. Oh, I felt like that was, was a warm up for me because usually, uh, to be completely honest, I usually watch it twice before the Mando Fan Show. I didn't get a chance today just because there's so much Ooh. going on. So it was nice to get to talk about it before this because yeah. it kind of got my memory going on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and even talking to them, we still didn't cover so many things about the show no, yeah. that we need to get into. I, I I held I definitely held a couple things back for our show, but I want to thank oh, Alex and Molly you. for for having us on. Um, they're the best, and we had such a good time with them. And they're yeah. actually we just say it now they're going to be our first guest on the Mando Fan Show this season next Friday as we talk about Chapter Ten. So Alex yeah. and Molly will both be with us. Um, That'll be a good time. Um, but before we get into things here, we obviously just want to let you know we do have the Super Chat feature available uh, if you want to support what we're doing here. And also it vaults you to the uh, top of the list for you know comments and getting involved in the show. So we, we appreciate that. We do have that. our first one. David. Uh, David Probus, who says, 5,000 subscribers. The base is growing. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, That's so David. awesome. Thanks. And he, he asked us a question on... He asked us a question on uh, the Star Wars Explained one. And I'm glad we to hear your dad's you doing do better. one time. So get that out of the way. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. I think that one was a little better. But yeah, so we're talking about Chapter 9, The Marshal of uh, the Mandalorian. And uh, before we get into that, um, we just want to let you know that we have just launched our new Season 2 Mando Fan Show shirt. So if you go to teespring.com slash the Mando Fan Show S2. And James... uh got his sweatshirt the early. The stress he that went into getting this sweatshirt, guys. Yeah. You have no James idea. James ran out and hugged his mailman and said, thank you so much. <laughs> and th yeah. This actually happened last time with the Gideon shirts. Like, I special ordered mine extreme delivery and you guys did like normal delivery and got yeah. it first. I was right, like, right. what is happening? And I thought the same thing was going to happen with this. But yeah. I got it, guys. The Man of Fantasy Season 2 shirt. I love yeah. it. The colors pop on the black. It's yeah. awesome. Great. So yeah, go, go pick it up. T, uh, teespring.com slash uh, the Mando Fan Show S2. I always, and I always got that early access. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and then we're going to get into the uh, ratings of the episode. But before we do that, we have two giveaway winners we want to announce. Uh, thanks to our friends at jewelrybrands.shop. Uh, follow them on Twitter. They just started Twitter. So they're newbies on Twitter. Don't let them know how, how crazy it can be. We want to welcome <laughs> them to Twitter. It's jewelry underscore brands. Follow them. And of course, if you want to go to their uh, website, jewelrybrands.shop, uh, and, and check out, use TRB code, uh, use a promo code TRB for 10% off. But we have two uh, giveaway winners. One was the Twitter one, 
which was just retweeting and following us and jewelry brands for the Mandalorian blue shade uh, pin, uh, which was not available to buy yet. But we have a winner, and that is I love this guy at Joey Sack. Joey Sack is the winner Yay. of the Mandalorian pin. Joey, yes. we're going to get that out to you as soon as possible. And then, Lacey, we had another one for Instagram, right? Yes. So we had a different prize for Instagram, which was the child necklace of him sleeping in his little pram, uh, Baby Yoda. And the winner is Jake Hoochins? Hoochkins? Hoochins? I would say Hoochins. Hoochins. Jake, you won. Congrats. All right, Jake. All right. More like Jake, who cares? You win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say, who cares? I was like, well, that's kind of mean. It's a little mean. <laughs> um, Jake cares because now he's winning uh, some free Baby Yoda stuff. Um, yeah. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, we're going to hop into uh, the segment that we like to call the Pedro Pascal face scale, where we rate the episodes from zero to 10 using Pedro Pascal's beautiful face. <laughs> uh, because um, when we first started the Mando fan show, we weren't sure if we we're going to see his face. So we're like, we got to get him involved somehow um so uh yeah and you can use halves too so zero to ten using halves uh i'm just gonna kick things off right now with mine i have tied my highest score from last season where i gave chapter seven the second deborah chow episode a nine so i am giving uh chapter nine a nine so john favreau well done sir for writing and directing that one um, so that's where I'm at with this one. Uh, James, what did you give chapter nine on the Pedro Pascal face scale? So it's interesting. I went back and I was looking through all my uh, season one scores and the highest rated episode was uh, episode six. But I, I was really I was looking at this first episode of this season and I was like, I I think I legitimately like this better than anything in the other season. Yeah. Um, so I'm giving this one uh, an 8.5, which is roughly like around what I gave that that episode six. So right. 8.5. And I feel like that still gives me a little bit of breathing room if I decide to do a nine or a nine five later, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't want to push it too much. You know what I mean? But I, hey, I loved this episode. Loved Speaking it. Speaking of pushing it, uh, Lacey Gillerin, uh pushed it out of the gate. Uh, for episode one with like a nine five or something last year. I don't so. even remember. I feel like, okay, yeah. for people just tuning in this season, first of all, welcome. We're really excited to have you here on the Mando Fan Show. Second of all, uh, my scores are built on excitement for Star Wars and have yes. no credibility yeah. to any type of scoring system. It makes no sense. So I last year, 12. <laughs> yeah, last year I started really high because I was just so pumped to be watching live action television mm -hmm. and it just set off a course of n n none of the scores matter. It's like, whose line is it anyway? You know, points don't matter. <laughs> um, but you think I would learn? I didn't. Mm. This episode got a nine. <laughs> hey, you're right there with me. All right. It so was very, very good. Okay, so that averages out to us. I'm just going to try to figure this out myself. Just, I think that's a nine point or no, eight point eight three, I believe, for us. Oh, uh, there it is, right there. So you see all those beautiful Pedro Pascal faces <laughs> on the screen. Um, now, eight eight point eight three. That eight point eight. Oh, eight eight point eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. The three was yep. throwing me off. I was like, it's not eight point three. Gotcha. I got a million Pedros on every episode. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to know, like, obviously in the in the live chat, drop what your Pedro scale score is, uh, and talks amongst yourselves, and uh, don't be don't be hostile with each other. It's all it's just a number, and it's just Pedro Pascal, so it's okay. No one's listening to the out of ten scale. It's all above tens. Yeah. They're all on my side. I, you know what's funny? <laughs> so, so if you're if you're a Patreon supporter of the Resistance Broadcast um, at patreoncom slash broadcast, uh, we put your score on the show as well. We take an average of your scores and feature one of you on here. And our patrons gave a little below us. They gave an eight point five five, so about eight and a half, uh, but still a very good score for the first uh, episode of season two. There's their score there at the bottom. And look at uh, all those lovely faces. Look at that. He's just <laughs> it looks wait. Now if they got the if they got that face on that action figure, I don't know if everyone out there saw that heinous. People still bought the heinous figure. one though. <laughs> That looks like <laughs> the old comedian Buddy Hackett or, or an old boxer. Uh, I don't get it. He is so attractive. Him and Oscar Isaac, and they both messed up. They messed I up both like, of those. 
I, I yeah, think but Oscar, also it's Oscar's better looking than Pedro. Like, no, I'm saying they're both good looking. Mm. I give I give the edge to Oscar. Though. <laughs> I think they're both good looking. All right, so uh, we we're featuring one of our patrons right now, and that is Commander Joe Z. And he said nine out of ten, only because of another training montage type. Uh, portion of the show outside of that i couldn't have asked for much more great episode so he gave a nine uh just like you and me Lacey. so we do have someone with a super chat lando okay. c is back he said i'm coming in hot like 12 parsecs out the gates baby thanks l3 <laughs> she deserves more credit by the way 10 beautiful pedro pascal faces don't try don't try to catch these hands. Lando is both super excited, but Very super excited. aggressive. Like, right. don't mess with me. Well, in our uh, Patreon chat on Discord, he showed his whole spread of his new, uh, his dessert he had for tonight and his drinks. And he has his makes a little to happen pin on his drink. He's ready to life. go. Thanks, Lando. Lando. Yeah. Very cool. If, that, if that's your real name, Lando C. <laughs> um, all right. So now we're going to move on to our segment, uh, Easter eggs and references and that sort of thing. But before we do that, we do have a special reveal uh, for all of you who are joining us live here. Uh, we have another new uh, merch design that we had specially made uh, just for us. And we're going to put that up right now. James is going to fire it up. There it is. So this is wherever I go, he goes. It is tiny. And if you look very closely on the bottom right, if you're a TRB diehard, you'll see that we inscribed tiny on there to give it that TRB flair. And uh, you can pick that up if you would like. Now it's live at teespring.com slash TRB tiny on all different sorts of uh, merch, uh, whether that's shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, and that sort of thing. So we absolutely love this artwork and uh, we're so happy to have it and to reveal it today, which we weren't even expecting to do that. So there we go. Uh, so and, now and TRB yeah. tiny does not need all the periods. <laughs> yeah, right. Just T I N Y and uh, the way you go, or you can just go to teespring.com slash store slash resistance. And it's there in the store. Yeah. yeah. So a couple super chats before we get started into our sure. uh, Easter egg and more descriptive discussion. So first of all, yeah. Rick Villanueva with a super chat. Thank you so much. He says Mando fan show. Another one. Another one. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so man, much. Dude. We have Shannon. Thank you for your super chat. We said you guys are going to crush it this season. Oh, uh, thanks, Shannon. Shannon. Thanks, oh, Shannon. Thank you. And then we have another one. I'm just trying to find it. This uh, another chat is crazy <laughs> right now. Uh, Lando C again, who said, just wanted to thank you for the great content as always. And just to give credit where credit is due, out of all the masses of Star Wars channels on YouTube, Star Wars Newsnet is by far the best out there. Best oh, there is to offer. Oh my thank God. you so much, Lando. I need. Like, we need to go off for a drink or something. I'm gonna I do the, uh, the the Mark Hamill <laughs> thing where you go. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. No, that's so awesome, man. Thank you all. That's yeah. incredible. Um, this thing. <laughs> this yeah. Thing. Stop. Um, all right, so now we're going to go around like we did last year. Um, same type of deal with this segment. We're going to run through Easter eggs, each take a turn, obviously stealing ones from each other, getting mad at each other, but the chemistry is <laughs> organic here, so it's okay. Um, but why don't we start off with Lacey. Uh, do you have an Easter egg or a reference uh, to even pop culture? Like We, we kind of go all, all about here. Uh, Easter egg or a reference. About- yeah, you're talking about stealing. Um, at the beginning, when Amy Sedaris is holding Baby Yoda, the child, oh. and she's talking about keeping him, but she's not keeping him, him. Yeah. and then saying something along the lines of, you know, if it divides, I'll buy the offspring or whatever. Obviously, a Gremlins reference. You're welcome, I, John. You brought that up, and I held it. I I thought that that was gonna. I was like, I am gonna drop this, and they're gonna be mind blown. Because no one's going to, and I bet I everyone's know. like, yeah, everyone's probably like, yeah, that's the easiest one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, James. I have one that, that I, yeah. I have one that I'm going to save here for a little bit because okay. I feel like it's so deep, but I got to go for the big ones first. Um, sure. I'm just going to start off by going Anakin pod racer, right? Everyone's talking about that. That yeah, is now, the yeah. now, has it been confirmed that, that, big that was his or is it the same model? I think it's just a pod racer engine is what people are saying. So to me, when I saw it, I go, that's a pod racer engine. I knew it right away. But then somebody pointed out it was the Anakin one. And I saw a side by side and I'm like, it looks just like it. I mean, it would be 
it would be pretty astonishing to me out of all of the possibilities of pod racer engines. Like when you look at episode one, you see all of them there, like all the mm. possibilities. It's very unlikely that, you know, he wanted it would just so happen to look just like it. it's different. It's like they changed yeah. it up, gave it some ages, patched things, rebuilt it a little bit. But sure. I think it's supposed to be one of his pod race engines. I think all that's right. the point. We um, should actually change the name of our segment to Easter Sugas, according to yeah. Thank you for yeah. the super chat. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Sugas. Ooh, I like that. Um, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go with. Um, yeah. The the one yeah. we, we talked about this uh, with Alex and Molly, the, the uh, sand people riding in single file. Mm-hmm. That's, um, oh. that's a smart. A uh, little drop in that isn't one of those things where you need to explain to anybody because a casual viewer like my brother or somebody will watch that and be like, oh, okay, they're just marching in. Uh, right. But then, you know, the keen people who remember A New Hope are like, ah, good. Thank God they did that. That's like when we were like hoping Lando was going to say Han instead of Han and Solo and they did it. It's those yeah. little things that keep the suspense the, uh, of, uh, you know what I'm saying? Suspend, Speaking of Solo, suspend his belief. <laughs> What's that? I said, speaking of Solo, not to get off topic, today was yeah. a pretty good day for uh, John Kasdan talking about John Solo. John Kasdan breaking hearts everywhere by talking about Solo <laughs> too, even though he's probably kidding. Like, anyway. It's going to be on every website tomorrow. John Kasdan. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He, he knows that, though. So maybe he shouldn't be talking about it if he doesn't think it's possible. Anyway. John, come on the show. <laughs> just, just, yeah. We just want to chat. Hop on <laughs> the show, John. Let's talk. And uh, actually, how about your dad? That'd be a dream come true for me. <laughs> Imagine if we were like, not you. Not yeah, you. Actually, no, we get him on the show and then we're like, can you call your dad on FaceTime <laughs> and just hold him up for us, please? Um, all right, Lacey, do you have another one? Um. So by the way, look at my notes. They're just chicken scratch. And it's like three pages of me just writing, yo, baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the music is mm-hmm. cool. Um, Probably... I felt like the town, the shots from the town reminded me of Solo. I don't know if that's on purpose, but it definitely did where it's like very quiet and everyone's just kind of looking and no one's talking at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It gave me that. uh, Savarine. Savarine. Yes. Thank you. uh, Feeling to it. And I'm sure that's just like a normal Western type thing, but I definitely got Solo vibes from it. The The town reminded me of like a model that the person didn't paint yet. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I see that because like the buildings <laughs> were the same color as the sand kind of Everything right, was right. Exactly the same. All right. Um, that's a good, that's a good one. Uh, James. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to tackle this, but I guess Cobb Vanth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah. It is, is the Easter egg of like, Hey, you oh, may that. think this character is just a, a new character that they're introducing to you. But like anybody who knows, knows they're like, Oh, that is a character that we've been paying attention to for a long time. And, um, they, well, I mean, we can talk about it a, a little bit later, but like, you know, they kind of, I don't want to say mess up, but they kind of change or take liberties or whatever with kind of exactly how it all rolled out or whatever. But, um, but I think there's so many things like all, all the stuff about the, the mining people yep. that are kind of taking over the town and all that. That's that's all aftermath, man. That's all stuff that's in the book. And it's like yeah. if you just kind of take a, a broad look at that story like they retold it here. And it's great to see it in live action. It's so cool. And it's massive payoff for anybody who has known that story for a long time or who bought yeah. the book and earned it and read it, you know. For sure. Do we need to read a couple of comments there, Lacey? Oh, I'm just going through them while you guys chat because okay. people are saying cool things. I want to give them credit. Like, um, if you know, you know. You do know. Yes. You do know. There is a good question here, and I don't know if that's sure. the case because I actually wanted to know this. Um, mm-hmm. David Probus asks, were those Womp Rats on Tatooine, those things bouncing around? No. Womp Rats are bigger as far as I understand it. What are those little um, things? They actually looked like Ducky on Land Before Time with a mixture so of rat. I was actually going to bring that up as one of the things I didn't like from the episode. Um, I actually liked those. I just didn't one, know what they were called. One of the things that prevented it from the 10. Uh, I don't know if they oh. were really. So passionate about things? the little. I mean, I know we're doing the Easter egg thing right now, so we're getting a little off topic. But 
I'll just say this. It reminded me of the CGI gophers at the beginning of Indiana Jones and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull because they looked like too CG. And I was like, what was the point of that? Because then you like you, you compare it to the two creatures in The Rise of Skywalker, which were the puppets, and you see the fur flowing. You're like, that's cool. And then you see these things, and it looks like just it's a cartoon. And it just seemed unnecessary for them to have been there. It reminded me of the, mm. the little dinosaurs in Lost World. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, those two. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, that's a good call. The ones which, that which eat people. I, I get it. <laughs> well, they like ate the girl or whatever, right? Yeah. Did well, they eat the child? I guess they eat, they eat other people too. Yeah. Didn't they eat they the eat, whole family? Well, they might even talk about family. that some other time. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. All right, Easter eggs. Yeah. Let's get back on track here. My next one is uh, Spotchka, the drink made from krill which mm. uh, comes from Sorgan. It's brewed on Sorgan, which is uh, the yeah. Sanctuary episode. And those are the things, the little like blue fish things that were in the baskets that the marauders or pirates were stealing from uh, the village. Or like um, shrimp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it, seeing him order up two glasses of that. It's, it's, a, it's a reference to itself. It's a Mandalorian like saying like, look, we're creating lore. We're here. Uh, we're established canon. We're going to reference ourselves now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love that. So it was kind of a toss back to uh, what was going on with Omera and uh, all the folks on uh, Sorgan at the village. So I love that. Uh, Lacey, what do you got? R5 popping up. That's R5 a good one. to the D4. He got a fixed motivator. He still got the leaky stuff. Up. They didn't. You know, it's funny. They fixed them all these years later, but they didn't clean them once. <laughs> hey, man, it's a droid. But as uh, Alex said really well, it needed to uh, work, not the, needed to look good. Yeah, the mm. certain point of view where he just wanted a master, and then you see it here is kind of going back to James, what you say on the show all the time is like being someone that loves the books, having those moments that you know correlate with something yeah. like makes you feel like you're inside. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the story was he he busted his motivator because he or two told him that he needed to, to go on Get, the mission, go on the mission, yeah, he kind of yeah. sacrificed himself. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> James, you got another one? Yeah. Um. All right. I I talked about this one on the other one, but the Death Star Two explosion that they show yeah. in in the thing, I I recognized it immediately. I was like, I've seen that before, and it took me a second to realize where I've seen it. And there may be other locations too where this is popped. But the first one that popped up to me was a, a Star Wars mobile game called Uprising. And uh, there's a scene where a character shows, um, you know, it to, to Jabba. I'm not sure if it's Jabba or if it's just like a hut in general, but mm -hmm. it was it was marking the turning point, you know, like, hey, things things are about to change. And what was really cool about it is it is straight up the same thing the same visual and i understand like you look at it at diff different angles or whatever but i think what's kind of interesting about it is it is they didn't they didn't take liberties and change it or whatever it's like we had this this video that went viral across the galaxy and yeah. we showed some it showed somebody watching that video so if somebody else in the galaxy is watching that same video it has to be the same video so right. they pulled from like this old video game where they created you know a hologram and and that that story of yeah. how that visual got passed around to the mass that's how everybody knew um that it happened you don't see that in return of the jedi you see everybody dancing and cheering it's like how the heck did they know it's not yeah. like the empire was like Looks like we just got defeated. <laughs> right. They, you know, it was it was like a leaked viral video, basically. I wish they showed the shield falling down to Kef Beer. Be like, we'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need you later. You got some stuff <laughs> hidden inside you that we need later. Um, all right. Uh, next one. What do I want to go here? I guess I'll just jumble these together the whole like um trope of you know conquering the beast and one is like always luring the beast out of the cave like the beowulf stories and those sorts of things and even mm -hmm. mando chapter two uh last year sort of uh getting the um uh, mud horn out but also literally going into the belly of the beast the belly of the beast is like you know you're going into you know hell's den to to get yourself into some trouble but he mando literally went into the belly of the beast and and busted out and it reminded me of men in black when will smith did it sure and uh drax <laughs> in uh guardians of the galaxy mm -hmm. he he uh, got eaten up and then like and hercules 
And yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, ha- it happens a lot. And so I think that's just maybe a nod to, to that type of storytelling. So I'll, uh, I'll go with that and just put that all in one cocktail and send it to <laughs> you guys. There. Okay. Uh, Lacey, do you have uh, any more? Uh, yeah. The Gamorrean guards that are fighting at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, little trimmer, little buffer, but uh, there they are. Mm-hmm. Less, uh, less throw, in, th- throw in with that too the uh, the vibro weaponry. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And the graffiti markings on the wall that are like stormtroopers and all different types of things and markings and mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. yep. All right, uh, James. Any more? Um. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I got um a sabotage jetpack. Yeah. The uh the uh, scene of hit. Mando yeah. is that, you know taking him out just for a second he goes flying off to the side or whatever. So obviously um it, it's a it's a faulty jetpack and they even make reference to it later where he's like here's here's your stuff back. <laughs> Let him know that thing was broken before yeah, I, I, I got it. it. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a so good So I think there's definitely a good like wink there, wink easter egg to uh Boba Fett's jetpack, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll say Womp Rats. Obviously, that uh, dates back to A New Hope and throughout the saga. But my and this is my. I guess I'll get my cl- complaints out of the way. My second complaint from the episode was that <laughs> they had too many Womp Rat uh, references. Like uh, Peli Motto had one. Cobb Vanth had like seventeen. I feel like everything that guy said it was a metaphor or a simile that has to do with Womp Rats. Like hey, June I, bug I, I, I like a was the rat. tail of a womp rat in the eye of a storm. Like I, a I wrote down eye. one of them that I liked. He goes, every once in a while, both suns shine on a womp rat's tail. Yeah, <laughs> he said womp rats. I think he legit said womp rats three times on that episode. It's like enough, Vanth. That's enough. Luke Skywalker was oh, blasting those things with his T-16 at age 15. Not a big deal. Pipe down with the womp rats. <laughs> it's a drinking game every time they say womp rat. <laughs> Is it my turn? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other big one I'd say that everyone was talking about besides the pod racing engine was the Pearl. That the comes out of the Dragon. dragon yeah. Pearl. Knew it was From coming. KOTOR, yeah. yeah. Everyone's talking about that. Yep. That was like the big thing. Everyone was like, oh my God. Yeah. Which yeah. which apparently, if refined or cleaned properly, can be used in lightsabers, which I read is a cannon. Ooh, really? Yeah. Yeah, Wookie Wikipedia. Those guys or gals, whoever it is, do a great job. Um, James, do you have any more? We should uh, uh, run through the rest um, quickly. Yeah, I would just run through them. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't got got too much. Uh, Sam Whitworth made a fun cameo appearance. It's kind yep. of an, I don't know. I'm if it's telling really you, Easter egg, but it's kind of a real life Easter egg. The John Burger of Star Wars. He yeah, should be there it. You go. <laughs> um. Uh. A two that I was unsure of, but I saw people talking about um, the Tuscan Raiders, the the like binoc things. Like, I can't, I can't confirm that. But oh, they're Toros. Somebody said saying? they were the same ones. Yeah, because they had the binocular things. Uh, I forget That's what the possible. technical sure. Star Wars term. Yeah. Um, and is this the first time we've seen those Tuscan dogs, or have they showed up in canon elsewhere? Um, I looked up what they were called, and I I don't know where I put uh, the name of it, but um, they they may have appeared somewhere else, maybe in comics or something. But I don't know that we've seen them in live action. I mean, no, maybe... I definitely. Oh, I was thinking maybe Attack of the Clones, but I, I could be wrong. I don't. Uh, think they weren't so. in there, were they? Okay, all right. Um, I got one more. It's 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 my kind of my big one that I kind of discovered on my own. That I thought it was kind of interesting. You think um, so? I thought I had I, a gremlin one to myself. Well, no, I'm pretty sure I'm probably the only person that found this one. Um, John, uh, say his name. The actor who plays uh, Gore Crash. John Leguizamo. Leguizamo. Okay, I don't want to. I messed it up last time. John Leguizamo plays the character. uh, Yes. And he plays an alien called uh, an alien called Gore Crash. Right. And I was like, okay, this is crazy. First time. I mean. I imagine it was the first time we've ever seen him, but I wanted to see if his name or anything was related to anybody. Mm-hmm. And I put in Gore Koresh into Google, and what pulls up is David Koresh, who was the um, the leader, the cult leader in the Waco 
Texas incident, right? Yeah. Okay. That is the latest thing that uh, John Linguizamo has done. He was in the show Waco and he was like the secondary character who was learning uh, to become one of these cult leaders or David Koresh. All right. So the fact that his character's name is Gore Koresh, I'm like, that's a that has to be a direct reference to the show. Yeah, I guess so. It's pretty cool. I think no, you overhyped absolutely. It, but... I th there's no doubt about it. It I, I can't... know, but I feel, I feel like you, you overhyped it a little bit. That's ridiculous, and nobody knows that. <laughs> nobody was sitting there looking at it and they're like they're but like, I thought oh, it's like, played by John Leguizama. His name's okay. David Koresh. That's a right. reference to the last show he the last yeah. big show he was in. Yes. about the Waco incidents. That's a reference to his last project. Yep. Can I say an Easter egg that I think is an Easter egg, but it might not be like a yeah. chance one. <laughs> James is good. I'm just busting your chops. Forget right. all y'all. All right. Yeah, go ahead, Lacey. <laughs> I think that Boba Fett at the end, which I obviously is an Easter egg in itself, mm. uh, is holding Fennec Shan's sniper rifle. Hmm. I think the gun on his back is her gun, which would place him in season one. Yeah. That, I'm willing uh, to accept this, but I haven't looked. Yeah. That's fine. I'm just saying, that. I didn't say it was an exact thing, but I'm saying yeah. him the and only... himself is an Easter egg. But yeah. then also, yeah. I think that's the case. Um. All right. Do I have any more? No, not really. Or um, Suga. All the other ones are like the the, the other obvious ones, like the mm. Cantomo thing or whatever you call it. And Yeah. I saw stuff. Zuvio's helmet. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the last one I had, which uh, I don't know if it's that entertaining, but the weak way was played by W. Earl Brown, who played um, uh, Mary's brother in Something About Mary, and he was also the cameraman Kenny for any Scream fans out there. Uh, he's a very um, cult-like character actor, and when I saw his name pop up, I was like, oh, my God, because I was a huge Scream fan, uh, but mm -hmm. he also plays, uh, what was his name in Something About Mary? With the baseball. I don't know. We have That's a super good. chat though. Right. Camera guy. So we have a super chat from Mick Elvis. Thank you for the super chat. They said the best Easter egg for me was the Kotor callbacks that there were all over this. Uh, yeah. That were all over the whole crate dragon mission. Right on. Thank you so That's much, so Mick cool. Elvis. Uh, all right. So let's get into the next section the Mando Code. Yes, that's right. It is back. The Mando Code. It's our season-long giveaway contest. So I'm going to reveal a number on each episode, including our season finale recap show. And on that final show, we'll reveal how to submit your guesses to win the Mando Code Bounty. I put that in all caps, like the Star Wars crawl. So oh, cool. I yell those words. <laughs> uh, th throughout the season, we will reveal additional items as the bounty grows. But the grand prize will be a limited edition Mandalorian box. Thanks again to our friends at JewelryBrands.shop which includes Werner Herzog's Empire Medallion Necklace, the Mandalorian Skull Necklace that Baby Yoda now has, and a brick of Beskar steel, which also can serve as a magnet. Uh, and it comes in a limited edition box. They only made about 8,000 or so of those things. Uh, and one of them is going to be going to you. They, I think they retail over like 100 bucks. But we're going to be adding more prizes as the season goes on. So be sure to follow uh, Jewelry Brands on Twitter at Jewelry underscore Brands. Uh, you don't have to do that to win, but we're just trying to, you know, help them out. And uh, go to their online store. And again, use TRB at checkout if you want. This ring is off. from them. There you go. Right on. Uh, they have great stuff. Uh, so the first number in the Mando code is 20. Two, zero. All right. So keep and don't share it because you want to win the bounty. So mm -hmm. you, got, you got to watch. Don't put to it in win, the comments. Folks. Yeah. All right. Next section, obviously, we're just going to do a spoiler breakdown of. Do the we want to run through some super chats first? If we have yeah. them, absolutely, we yeah. do. So right. first is Double C. Thank you for the super chat. Who said this one is for James Cobb Cantu, baby? <laughs> I hope I said that right. Uh, yep. The next one, I'm scrolling <laughs> up here, guys. The next one is from Matt. Hey, Matt. He said, "You guys have Matt. got me through COVID lockdown and also reignited my love for Star Wars. Thanks wow. so much." Favreau, wow. Favreau hit Episode Nine out of the ballpark. I agree. I watched it at 3 a.m., guys. As you saw from our Mandalorian minute, I was mm -hmm. hyped. Um, hyped. I want to know about the aspect ratio change, though. Why? 
question mark, which we'll get into, I think, in our spoiler review in a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just hold on that, Matt. We're almost yeah. there. And then we have another super chat from Lando. Lando, thank you so much. Lando. Because, hey, James, with the fact that Ka uh, Cobb and potentially Fett entering the show is the first episode or in the first episode, do you think do you have more confidence that Sabine will officially make the show <sighs> asking for a friend? And I'm assuming oh, the friend oh, is him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. I, it, it's like it's like it's like rolling the dice you know what i mean like okay okay i just roll and i hit a jackpot does that give you more confidence you're gonna hit another jackpot mm. it's like i guess it, i guess it does but also it kind of like makes you feel like you're probably not gonna keep hitting jackpots so yeah we'll see man i i want it to happen i would think it'd be great yeah absolutely yeah. and the last one for now is alexander thank you alexander who says up, nothing man? for me to soup uh, nothing for me to super shout out from the episode itself, but the three of you are always deserving of one. Thanks for all you do. Thank oh, you thanks, so Alexander. It means so much to us. Wow. You have no yeah. idea. Thank you. Appreciate all right, that. now so into much. the meat. Yeah, the so meat of the episode. Yeah, so uh, just to warm the engines up here, uh, let's just the three of us uh, say what our favorite shot or moment was in the episode. So, oh uh, my gosh, I forgot about this part. <laughs> James, uh, I'll start with you as it, it's clear that uh, someone needs a few moments. Well, OK, yeah, when I when I watch when I think about watching it the first time, because now there's like something else that I think was just like really cool about it. But it's kind of I had to think of it later when I was first watching the episode. My favorite thing was exactly what they wanted, what they wanted it to be. It was the climax. Of, it was it was uh, Mandalorian and Cobb Vanth putting on that armor, you know what I mean? Like shooting up the jetpacks and headed uh, to take that thing Absolutely. out. So they already did all the planning. Things started going wrong and they were like, we have to take this into our own, own hands. We have to do it now. And d just, uh, it was that episode three Mandalorians coming over with the jetpacks thing. Something yep. about live action Mandalorians flying around with jetpacks. Sure. It's just like, it blows your mind. And they did it so well in this episode. Um, that I, I think it just like it was just unreal to watch and, and made you feel like you're like, I, I can't I can't believe we're getting this. Like, I'm I'm going right. to pinch myself and be like, oh, man, I had a dream. There was like a live action television show of Star Wars. And it was nuts. It was like Boba Fett and crazy stuff, you know. Yeah. But it's like we're seeing it. It's there. It's live. It's real. And it is great. I love yeah, it. I agree. That's a good pick. Uh, so, Lacey, did you think of one? Or you want me to do it? No, I do have one, but I just wanted to share this really quick because I totally forgot this happened. But I remember mm -hmm. laughing so hard when it did in the episode, which was from Kendall, which said my favorite <laughs> shot was the Bantha teeth cleaning. That, that which was I really funny. I totally remember happening. And yeah. I laughed out loud. So that is a great, yeah. great moment. Yeah. It was like a um, Muppet. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like the, the Tuscan Raiders are brutal. They're savages. They they do a lot of horrible things, but they are really big on dental hygiene. You know we're gonna see that at celebration. Someone in a band. Oh gonna... yeah, four out of five love... Tuscan Raiders agree to use this toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So favorite shot itself would probably be towards the beginning of the episode where the Mandalorian hangs up Gorkesh and he walks towards the camera and it's super like moody and dark mm. and you see the eyes of all those creature where. Which, by the way, what are those uh, about to eat him? Which is like in intense. I was like, yeah. oh, this mm -hmm. is kicking off real crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite moment is what James said. So I'm going to give my second favorite moment, which is more of like a comical thing that stuck with me. And it's probably because I watched it at 3 a.m. So when by 4 a.m., I thought this was the best thing ever, which was at the end of the episode, they're cutting all the pieces of meat, which at first you're like, oh, God, it's so much red meat. Uh, but my favorite food is steak. So I laughed super hard when they had that like Flintstone chunk of meat on the speeder mm -hmm. bike and baby Yoda, it just kind of holds on him for a second. And he's just like my meat <laughs> and he just like touches it. And it's just so funny to me that they're just like wrapping this meat up and taking it to go. Yeah. Love it. Love me some steak. Yeah. I, I was, you know, I was thinking because the Tuscan Raiders take the rest and that's a big beast. I was like, do they have deep freezers in the Tuscan camps? Like, what are they doing to preserve that meat? Or they eat it like all in one day. It, it was just so crazy. funny. Uh, we have one more super chat before you go, John. It's from Christian Morales, who said, the best shot has to be Mando rolling into town like the space cowboy he is. The Western yeah. was cranked to 11. That was Thank pretty you, Christian. cool. Thank you, Christian. 
yeah. means a lot. Uh, and that is a like great that, comment. That pull away. Like when he says, you mean the marshal? Ask him yourself or whatever. And they do the pull yeah. away and the reveal the of him standing in the yeah. door. Thank slider you, Christian. Shots beautiful. Appreciate Good. that, buddy. Um, all right. So uh, mine is uh, simple. I love the classic stuff, and I love that uh, hip shot from behind of uh, Cobb Banth about to, you know, go for his blaster on his holster. We've seen it in Solo. We've seen it in other Star Wars. We've seen it in classic westerns. I just love it. it's a very classic western shot, and you knew Favreau wanted to get it involved in his uh, in his show, and he directed this one, so you knew it, was, it meant a lot to him to to get that shot in there. Right, and you, right. And you're going to see parallels of that in Han Solo and other westerns online eventually when people put collages together. But it's always that those two fingers just like twitch just a little bit as you're getting a little antsy to, to like who's going to draw first. And there was something about the the tension in that scene of those two about to. Um, draw and duel uh that i just absolutely love so that's my mm -hmm. favorite shot um all right so let's just get into it and talk about the episode we obviously all rated it very high um i'm gonna start by saying i actually and this is probably unpopular because of um tiny baby yoda but i love the fact that he kind of took a back seat on this episode um because all everybody's been talking about is baby yoda baby yoda baby yoda and i feel like knowing john favreau and the type of creator he is, he probably doesn't like, he loves it obviously because it's creating success for his show, but I don't think he like. it's like when a, when a good band has like, like Metallica has Enter Sandman and people are like, oh, that's the band with Enter Sandman. He doesn't want Yoda to be his Enter Sandman. Like he wants this show to have a lot of hits. And I think mm -hmm. co coming in to season two and putting Baby Yoda a little bit on the side and you know, still always checking in on him and showing us he's okay. There he is. He's okay. Mm -hmm. Here, oh, this is all going on. Look, he's okay. Don't worry. Right. But putting the focus back on the Mandalorian and introducing Cobb Vanth and what that uh, combative relationship is and what that turned into, uh, in addition to the other environments, I think was huge. Um, I really think that um, putting like they could have pushed the Baby Yoda thing. And we would all loved it and ate it up and stuff like that. But I feel like putting him aside was a bold move, a smart move, though. And I absolutely love that. So that's my first takeaway from this episode. Yeah, I completely agree with that, actually. As the person that's wearing a Baby Yoda shirt with Baby Yoda's all behind them, I actually agree with you that um, I think we've talked about a lot on the Resistance broadcast, like being afraid that Baby Yoda is going to overshine and become what yeah, people right. turn to for the Mandalorian when the show is called The Mandalorian. Right. Um, you know, this episode, I, I ranked it so high because I'm always excited for Star Wars, but because it was a very, very good episode, I felt like I didn't get a chance to sit at all. It was so fast. Like, it didn't stop. It was like every moment mattered and you didn't want to turn away at any second because you'd yeah. miss something. Um, and I know I, when I watched it this morning, I texted the guys being like, don't go online because <laughs> it was just that good. And there were moments right. that you wanted to hold on to, to have your own surprise, like no way moment like last year. Um, but yeah, it's just super exciting. Which we'll get for to, people. but I did not get. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but, you know, Cobb Vanth is a character that I know of and I know his story. I I haven't fully read Aftermath. I have it. I started it. I didn't finish it. But I know of his character from our conversations and then a lot of discussions about him over the summer. But I thought Tim Timothy Oliphant was great. I think his hair is fabulous. He's like one of the most attractive Star Wars characters I've ever seen. Um, but I great think... Great veneers. Yes. Uh, John, you said this with Star Wars Explained, but... I agree with you. I feel like he's playing a character that everyone knows him for, which I feel like, again, goes back to the idea that we've said on the show before, which is John Favreau picks who he thinks is the best. He's great at being creative and coming up with wonderful ideas, but he's also the best at putting together a team of people that he knows will deliver yeah. the top quality content that you're looking for. So when he wants a bad guy, he's going to get that bad guy from Breaking Bad that everybody loves. Right. If he wants a cowboy sheriff, he's going to get the cowboy sheriff guy. <laughs> and you know, he, you know, he talks about, um, oh, I love playing with my, these are me playing with my toys, my action mm -hmm. figures and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like he could very well be a breaking bad fan, a justified fan and be like, this is sort of me playing with my action figures. Me as a director bringing in actors and I get to play with you guys. And this right. is what we're going to do here. So um, yeah, James, I, I know you're really riding high on the Cobb Van thing. So why don't you 
pick up where Lacey kind of left off there and um, let us know what your t- did they execute it the way you wanted it fully? Were the things you wish they did a little differently? And what do you think of Oliphant as like the choice uh, as the character? Like when you th- when you were reading Cobb Vanth, did you see this type of guy? Yeah. Um, well, I I listen on audiobook and on audiobook he definitely has a little bit of a different voice. Like there's a little bit different type of a character. He really has a drawn out voice <laughs> in the book. Glad that yeah, I mean it. That. <laughs> I, well, I know, but like I I think I think when it comes to those voices, like sometimes I take them as canon. Like oh, that character sounds like that. And other times I go that this is just like Mark Thompson or just like a, a loose interpretation of what a character might sound like. So I, I didn't hold that against them. There were a couple right. things that obviously changed with this story. Um, if you guys know, you know, you know, it wasn't, it was a little bit of a different way. He got the, the armor. Uh, also there's like a city that he's protecting and it's called Freetown, And that's obviously not the city here. So there's kind of right. some loose stuff there, but another um, star Wars I, flashback, by the way, we don't yes. see that very often and they're doing it now a lot. Yeah. And yeah, Mandalorian, especially because we kept seeing those shots of him as a kid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that could be, you know, a little bit because of uh, Ryan Johnson, right? I think doing so. The flashback Absolutely. thing. And he then JJ, made it okay. yeah. JJ said, I didn't think you could do that in star Wars, but I, I guess you can now. So, <laughs> um, but yes, uh, but yeah, you, you take a step back and you, you look at, what is the story of Cobb Vanth? Like somebody, somebody told it this way. Another person told it this way. Did they get it right? They got it right. Right. They pulled yeah. this character straight out of, um, this interlude, this side story, just out of the, the books, um, and created him in live action and, and made him real. And it was such a huge, um, payoff. You know what I mean? I said that about solo. I said, I, that's why I love solo so much is there were so many things in it. That was like, it felt like a thank you to the fans. Like we did this because we know you bought the book. We know you read the comic. We know you watched the show that like 2% of star Wars fans watch. Yeah. Um, we, we did that for you. And, uh, this happening in the first place was just like crazy. And then they picked like the perfect actor for it. And they, he, hopefully he comes back, but the way this episode, I love this episode. And I, like I said before, I think it might even be like my highest rated of, of over everything in season one. Right. Um, it, because it is, it's an hour long, it's, it's a short film, but, uh, like, you know, and it tells this story that is, just so perfect from beginning to end it's like it's it's its own little movie that they somehow squished into an hour and didn't give you any breathing room like Lacey was saying it just every scene is important every scene is it there felt like rise of skywalker where it was just non-stop it was like you can't yeah. go to the bathroom you can't <laughs> And it, yeah. and it, and it feels like if, if they had this thing where like every year they give you not a two hour film, but a one hour film, this would have been it, you know, and mm-hmm. yet we're still getting more episodes. It's crazy. I know. Um, but it, it's just so, it's just so perfect that it was Cobb Vanth too, because like his story is a side story in that book. It's, it's plucked out. It's while you're listening to this other story, here's mm-hmm. something else that's happening in the galaxy. So to watch right. this version uh, like Alex said, it felt like the fourth chapter of Cobb Vanth. This is just something that's happening in the Star Wars world, beginning to end. There it is. And it's a great story. And it's a classic story, too. The the crate dragon and all that. That's a famous yeah. thing that people have been wanting to see for a very long time. Yep. And they did it on the on a big soapbox, you know, and it's right. great. Yeah. It's great. And- so what about what you didn't get, James? What didn't I get? Oh, the what, big. What did you miss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was, I was for anybody that didn't watch our thing with uh, Star Wars Explained. It, I was so pumped on Cobb Vanth. Uh, Lacey watched the episode first. She said, "Don't get on the internet." I waited for John to to say something in the chat, uh, in our private chat. He said, "Wow!" So I was like, "Oh, he watched the episode, right?" And I go, "I know, dude. They did it." Cobb Vanth, he's right there. I'm so <laughs> pumped. And he goes, and Boba Fett. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, so James I, just, whiffed. I was like, what was that? And I was like, yeah. when? Where? Maybe he right. just means like, it, it was Boba Fett because it was the helmet and stuff. I started looking around and stuff. I was like, nah. No. 
it's pretty, <laughs> no. pretty real for what people are saying here. <laughs> yeah. I went back, I watched the episode, uh, I, I not the whole episode again, but I, I was like, maybe that was the guy at the end. I looked at it and I was like, oh, so that wasn't random, ominous stranger Creepy that's just going to tease us <laughs> yeah, into something else that's coming. He turns around and I'm like, oh, yeah, it definitely. I totally <laughs> missed that. That facial recognition. To be um, reveal, yeah. But um, and, you know, whatever, that's fine. But it's just um, really funny because we were both like, wow, all that stuff in that episode. James like, yeah, Cobb, right? We were like, and <laughs> yeah, and James is usually one of the more observant ones, too. So that's pretty funny. Um, but I do like, you know, the fact that they do the um, layering of references or like moments. So like the Death Star exploding yes. or, you know, the Cobb Vance story and they show him uh, getting the armor from the Jawas, even though it's a little tweaked. It, it just adds uh, more uh, realism to the story and you feel there it's, it's more rich and real and you get different perspectives on these things. And I love that aspect of it. And I feel like uh, Favreau in writing this story knows how to walk the, that proper line uh, mm -hmm. between fan service and new. And he's like, you know, cause when they start this episode uh, you know, like leg is like, uh, yeah, you got to go to Tatooine. I'm like, you got to be, freaking kidding me we're going back to tatooine i'm like yeah oh, i definitely got a little weirded out yeah i was like come on <laughs> tatooine i'm acting like a bradoween right now complaining about it yeah. but <laughs> so but what they did is they take us to tatooine and we go back to peli motto which by the way people complained about amy Starris. i thought she was perfect i thought she was the most a new hope-esque acting character if you watch a new hope again there's a little the choppy and the woody a woodenness of the acting i thought she was Perfectly charming and fine, but and, and I love the uh, they, the o overlook of the droids this time to show his yeah right. his uh, f uh how far he's character come growth. since the yeah. last yeah. time character growth yeah that's what I was looking for yeah um, yeah absolutely. being like okay with the droids and stuff it's like okay I guess he likes droids now it's like obviously IG eleven like won him over and that's what really that, brings out the heart got to show that character growth in little and beats. they show the pit um, droids just being dumb again yeah i love dumb. it yeah. <laughs> um, the, 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 for, for the prequel fans to be like oh, yeah. Yeah, i loved it uh no i do too. i re, Bop him on the nose I re watched and, chapter seven and it's so funny with ig11 he's like you don't nose. have to, you don't have to be sad and he's like i'm not sad and he's like yes you are <laughs> yeah, yeah um so they, they take you to a different part of Tatooine. So you're still on that planet, but it's a new, it's new. It, they, they made Tatooine fresh, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And yeah. I think, I think Favreau is good at that. And look what he did with the Mandalorian. He wanted to tell a Boba Fett story. And Kathleen Kennedy said, we're working on a movie right now. He's like, all right, well, I'm going to do a Mandalorian. And he took something that everyone knew. There was a lot of storytelling behind it. And he gave us something new out of it. So I think he's very good at taking the old stuff, shining it up and creating something new out of it. Uh, whether that's locations, characters, people, um, and even, even uh, actors and what he's, what, who he's bringing into the mix here. So, and uh, the Cobb Van thing for me, you know, I, I got into uh, justified recently. And um, it's it's a it's a good show, and he he plays exactly this character, and just like his inflection, his tone, his mm -hmm. accent, uh, his his body language, and all that stuff. So I hope we do see more of him. Um, uh, I'm curious That's to like see Beckett, what happens there. Of. But the 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 one takeaway I have that has nothing directly to do with the Mandalorian is, and and I tweeted about this this morning because I you see the size of the crate dragon. And it's the size of uh, an Olympic swimming pool. And then you think of Obi-Wan scaring away the sand people in A New Hope. And he just has his robe and he's going, ah! Yeah. Ah! It's like, oh yeah, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan <laughs> is hilarious. Because if you're fooling Tusken Raiders Ultimate thinking you're troll. a Kray Dragon with a robe on your head at five foot nine at best. Uh, <laughs> I mean, unless he's doing some sort of weird force projection and he's making himself look like a giant crate dragon, and yeah. he's just inside like this, and we saw that version of him yeah. doing it. we don't know that that shot's not 100 yards back. Yeah, we, we don't know <laughs> if he's, he's yeah. giant. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just thought that's so funny how, like, Obi-Wan just had his robe, and he's waving his arms around screaming, and then, like, what's he supposed to be? And then you see this giant crate dragon, and you're like, 
nailed it obi-wan you freaking nailed it um so i thought that was funny but uh overall note <laughs> a- absolutely love the episode um i don't Two know quick if things yeah the music was amazing yep and everyone wants to talk about the aspect ratio switch. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Which, guys, I know this from Hunger Games. They so, did it in Hunger Games. I'll say this. Well, I mean, it, I it's think a, most people probably know it from Dark Knight, right? Oh, I well, don't know it from that. It, it's, all, it's also a thing that <laughs> they do in Western films uh, when they come out of it to the credits. They'll drop it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and do the scroll over the horizon or whatever. Um, so what's funny is I didn't notice them jumping into it uh, with the sixteen by nine covering the whole screen, but I did notice them fading back down uh, to the black barred widescreen. And um, someone had brought it up to me. They're like, "Did you notice when they popped it in your first watch?" I'm like, "I didn't. I did not notice that." Which oh, means they did. did a good job. Yeah. Because if I'm not if I'm staying where I need to be and focusing. Uh, then I'm locked in and they did it in a subtle manner where it wasn't just like, what just happened? It you makes know? you want to watch it on a big screen though. When you see that. Yes, yeah, it, 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 yeah. When I saw it and it was when they chose to do it is the reveal of the Craig dragon when it's coming right. out and it's like eating. And that's what did they just, did they slowly expand it or did they yeah. go to another no, no, frame? No, no, it doesn't pop in. It's slowly, no, it's expa- slowly like, yeah. Yeah, he's small. It's and as he's man. getting bigger into the screen, the screen maximized, the screen Favreau. gets bigger to fit him into the screen. That's which, usually what they do. It's like a, either in or an up movement of the mm, camera is what. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's 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 supposed to to tell you, but it's how you break the walls. You've been mm-hmm. constrained to this view for so long. And when something so big comes into the screen that it needs to to break those walls, the aspect ratio change allows it to break those walls. And I, I just noticed every time I do that, I'm like fitting in my own frame. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I have, and, and it's amazing. It's like go back and rewatch that scene. You'll be like, "Holy cow! It's so much bigger." I want to watch mm-hmm. it in the theater. I have a letter here that was sent to me by accident. It was sent to Disney, uh, and it's from the the return address is John Boyega and Oscar Isaac. Hmm, that was and, lucky. Yeah, and I had the letter here. I opened it earlier. It says, uh, "Dear Disney Plus, uh, we were both just kidding." <laughs> mic drop <laughs> well speaking of mic drop uh ludwig outdid himself this episode and it's episode one with ludwig. the music yeah uh um, yeah. unreal the first song when they're walking in that like graffiti area and it gets like really like tech and like yep. kind of like mm-hmm. dirty beat oh it's so good yeah. I liked it. And it got very 80s like, to me in this episode, like 80s power, like action movie sound to me compared to I feel like the first season, which was very like, I don't know. He talked about it like earthy tones and stuff like this to me seemed yeah. more cinematic. And you and because he introduced us to all the different themes in the first season, I felt like I could pick up a lot better on like the blending of the different songs and stuff. That's yeah. that's where I was going to. I was like, I feel like the first season gave us like, here's song A in all its glory. Here's song right. B in all of its glory. And now you're watching the episode and you're like, oh, whoa, that's like A and B mixed together with something with like a C in there somewhere. You right. know, mm-hmm. like did a really good job at, at uh, meshing it all together and, and making it new and fresh and picking up on the different tones. Which is a the John other was Williams like the original Star Wars staple. Right. Uh, no one does it better than John Williams, obviously. And you'll be like, oh, that he just weaved in the March of the Resistance there, or he just weaved in Yoda's theme over that or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Ludwig had said that he was really inspired to get into music by John Williams and even his earlier stuff before Star Wars. Um, and, you know, usually composers have a uh, track record of, of tendencies. And right. I think that's something that he may have picked up off of John Williams. And it just so happens that it works really well in Star Wars. And he's like, let me bring out that trick here. Like you said, Lacey and James, he has the established themes. And when the, he does put them back in, it's a sense of cadence of stability uh, in the storytelling. And you're like, OK, yeah, there's Mando's theme. There's the Baby Yoda thing. And uh, just that, I don't know, that sense of stability sometimes when the scenes or something can get a little chaotic. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I love it. You know, in my first watch, I don't focus on the music. And I don't know if that's a fault mm -hmm. of mine. But so, to me, I feel like that, again, it's one of those things where I get lost in the story um, that I'm not like saying, oh, there's that track or he's using a guitar here or something. And then every other watch after I absorb the story, I can be like, oh, man, timpanis. He's using those timpanis like they used for the sand people in A New Hope, the boom, 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 or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's like a um, little whistle or something that goes with them, too. And yeah. Yeah. I pulled it out of this episode. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's great. It was such a such a um I don't know, I want to say you don't want to say a gamble pick cuz he's he was so, so successful with Black Panther and all mm -hmm. the other stuff he's done, but I feel like Giacchino, uh Giacchino, I'm sorry, and John Powell are brilliant, but they were more of the traditional, you know, uh Star Wars composers where he was a little bit of a wild card. But right. then now mm -hmm. you, now when you hear his music, it's like that's from The Mandalorian and you know it. For sure. Yeah, love it. Um, any final thoughts before we speculate on what we're going to see next week? We'll spend a couple minutes on that and then we'll uh, close out. I'm just interested to see where this episode's going to go because they're starting on such a high. It's like where it's... <laughs> yeah. And not only that, a high of they succeeded. A high of everything went yeah. according to plan and it's wonderful. And you're like, oh no. What's so episode two was my lowest score last season. Mm. So it like so, it fell pretty quickly, but you know it, I trust obviously the system. <laughs> right. One, right. One thing we didn't talk about um, is the fact that our other the other toys didn't come to play. So again, Moff Gideon no it didn't show up. We didn't get Cara Dune or Grief Karga uh, as your main three. Obviously, there's other rumored cameos and the Ahsoka and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. in terms of the established characters, uh, you got to assume we're going to see them showing up. And I'm thinking now that we've establish where mando is uh right now entering season two and obviously he cares uh, about the kid a little more he's more of a parental figure he's softened on droids he's developing new friendships uh he, like maybe a year ago he would have killed Cobb vanth but now he's right. a little bit more of a human humanized person we see where he's at i'm thinking we start chapter two and they're going to tell us where moff gideon's at and uh to 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 balance out there's our good guy let's see what the bad guy's doing what do you guys yeah, think we're, what do you think we're doing um, or do you think we're going to get more of the stuff we saw from the trailer to like knock all the trailer stuff out of the way early like the i don't know planet and you know whatever it is tricky because he the whole mission obviously was to kill the dragon but before that it was to find a mandalorian to then reunite him with more mandalorians so he still didn't accomplish anything except getting this armor that was boba fett's armor so that's true yeah it's kind of interesting My of like okay they they did so much but they really didn't push the story forward in the sense of mandalorian didn't accomplish much it's just kind of reintroducing everybody to who he is like people that are just getting into it i guess so, so my guess is maybe then w the next episode is the uh, ice planet stuff. You think so? It's not the sea planet because we saw the sea planet where he goes back to Cara Dune. Yeah, you know, you might be right on the sea planet thing because that still feels like he's looking. Wait, that mean, he's kind of scouting and does that mean we're gonna get the to people the the Emmy winning performance? Stop! She she's been on screen for two seconds. <laughs> she's been on screen for two set. What? <laughs> so ridiculous. Sasha Banks yeah. coming up John's to get my eat, it, eat his words when she ends up being like the sweetest character. <laughs> like she pulls I'm not making it back, and it's like no, amazing. I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not even making fun of her. I just think it's funny yeah. how. Well, some Star Wars fans are so hype where they see one shot of one person literally doing nothing who's never acted before. And they're like, Sasha Banks is going to crush it. In the John, you're so <laughs> hype and you don't even know it. Oh, so we do have a super story, chat, though, though from right. Alexander Moylan. Well, thanks, Thank Alexander. you, Alexander. He says, I believe this was only the second time Mando wasn't seen departing a planet at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Question mark. Might uh, might he be on Tatooine for another episode? Wow, that's he, a great observation. Is that is that right? He left planets and at the end of every one. Huh? He did. I've not never even leave that. the planet uh, after episode four. The last shot is of Baby Yoda, and they're they're le they're leaving the village on the cart. Yeah, yeah. 
but they're not he wasn't leaving the planet which is the same thing he was doing now he was leaving the city but he wasn't leaving the planet well he probably was leaving we just didn't see him physically leave C- correct so yeah. but but i'm saying but it's an astute observation absolutely that that's yeah. interesting to think about i you know and uh, do you think we're going to pick up more well first of all do you think we're going to out of the main characters Moff, Gideon, Grief Karg, and Cara Dune. Do you think we're going to see all three of them the next episode? Do you think? Uh... I think he's going to go see them the next episode because he's now he got advice to go where to find a Mandalorian. Didn't find one. Where are you, where are you going to go? Back to the people you know to get help. Okay. Also, John, you might have to answer for this one, Maybe. which is the hate on Sasha Banks is real. It's not though. That's a, you know I tried to, <laughs> and it's funny you can't tweet these things. Because if you tweet it, the nuance new, the nuance does not exist on Twitter. So I I found that you, out yesterday or two days ago. If you see like my facial yeah. expression and my tone and stuff, I mean I'm just making a I think a logical statement. Like she's literally never acted professionally before. And I get wrestling. I said this on the pod uh, TRB. I get I get wrestling is acting in a sense when they do right. the behind the backstage stuff and all that. But she's she has no acting credit. Like I'm not, remember. and she might be great. I'm just saying, let's temper expectations. And she's probably. I will good. never temper. Um. So, <laughs> Lacey, are we seeing Moff Gideon? Yes or no? Uh, chapter two or chapter ten? Yes, because they have to bring him back as the bad guy. That's what I, right I now, there's know. no bad guy for people that are getting back into it. And you're gonna have people that probably started at season two that watched that previously on season one video and we're like i'm good yeah and then jumped in you're gonna have to reintroduce that bad guy because you need to know where he is where has he been how long has the time been yeah um james what about you and do you guys think we're putting they're putting a hold on boba fett till later on yes yeah me too and i think the same i think the same too for uh moff gideon i'm gonna go i'm gonna go episode (laughs) uh well episode three but it would be chapter 11 it's kind of going to get confusing, but I, I don't think it's going to be the next one. I think it's going to be the one after that. Cause I think you're going to do another episode. that's kind of setting up the season and the journey. And then in season in episode three, they'll, they'll say like, what do you mean? He's still alive. He's, he's hunting us. You know what I mean? They, they capture a guy or something yeah. like that. And he's like, Moff Gideon, he's coming after you. He's like, Moff Gideon was killed. And he's like, no, he's alive. He gave me the orders. I think that's going to like, like he's he needs a few episodes to get on a path and then moff gideon is gonna like swerve him off that path i think is it kind of bad that i love the mandalorian and obviously i love baby yoda obviously but like i'm kind of rooting for moff gideon because he's the bad guy (laughs) well no it's not bad because you want you want your villain established and you want to believe your villain because you don't want I want to... him to do something very bad so that I can hate him. Like I enjoy hating exactly. characters. Exactly. You you need him to And people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you need that true. you need that Kylo Ren killing Han Solo moment to be like that if you need to vault somebody to a high level status, that's the kind of move you make. Um so maybe Moff Gideon early on kills grief cargo or he kills carrot card dune or something but who said oh it was in our patreon general admiral call last mm-hmm. night which if you're interested check it out patreon.com slash resistance broadcast uh they were talking about their predictions and someone and i feel bad i don't remember who it was had suggested that what if he throws the head of the armorer at the Mandalorian, oh, yeah, like that'd be cool. killed her. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, that would be so amazing because it's just so evil. Right. The armor would be a good character to kill off where it feels like it feels terrible, but it's not like a huge loss, you know? Well, he could, I, he I feel could, like Queel, I felt that one. Well, he could throw that, that's uh, what whether, I'm saying. What, I, I, yeah. yeah, well, what, whether it's it could be an armor or head, you, you know, either way. <laughs> John, <laughs> that's why they're here. That's why they're here. <laughs> um, all right. So um, yeah, I think they're going to wait on Boba Fett because, again, you know, you have to. The good thing about those interviews that happen before the show comes out, some of them are like, oh, these quotes, blah, blah, blah. But Favreau, I think, lays little plants, little seeds for people to pick up on. And one was he liked the Game of Thrones storytelling where uh, you can leave characters for a while and go and tell another part of the story. So maybe. Now that he planted that Boba seed, a uh, Boba Fett, Boba Fett seed, we can get a whole episode on Boba Fett's situation that we hit pause at like chapter four or five. Yeah. Because like we need a breather. 
and we get Boba Fett gets his redemption or his. So his, you're he, saying that he might spill the boba tea. He might spill the boba tea. Yeah, he might. He might spill it. Is he boba tea ever a spill boba, boba tea? tea. Hmm. Um. <laughs> um. All right. So uh, that I guess that's pretty much it. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? Uh, the acid spit really creeped me out. I think that's the yeah. one thing that really creeped me out this and episode. That, oh, it's, that was a surprise. That was kills everyone. That was cool. The visual effects were unbelievable. Unreal. That, yeah. So that scene reminded me of the first Godzilla. Uh, not like the first Godzilla, but like the remake ones, the newer mm. ones, where like I don't, I don't know if either of you have seen it, but he go. Godzilla goes the whole movie in this villain or, or this creature or whatever. And there's a specific scene where I'm telling you, no matter, no matter how boring the movie you thought it was or whatever, everybody was blown away at the moment where he completely surprises everybody by grabbing the monster, opening up his mouth and then shooting like the blue laser down his throat. I, it like, it takes you off guard and you're like, Holy crap. Did that just happen? Is it and, Godzilla uh, girl? Or am I thinking of the oh, 1995 no. version with Matthew Broderick? Yeah, no, 1998. Yeah. 98. Where Puff Daddy's um, uh, uh, cover of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just remember the me. Taco Bell tie-in with the cups. Hear my and name. Like, Hear my call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and bad. he's all white and he's like floating. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. in the elevator. Jimmy Page yeah. is like, I mean, I need money. I, I, I um, <laughs> no, but but yeah, just to go back to that really quick, like yeah, the 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 acid coming out, the spray that uh, I think blew away a lot of people. I think nobody was expecting that, and I it was wasn't. like a, a crazy, like oh my and gosh, this is this happening moment? The, like I, I bring up Game of Thrones a lot, but like they were saying that the shows like this probably don't happen if Game of Thrones didn't exist because it took this type of storytelling to new heights on TV and um, Lord of the Rings too. Yeah, well, I mean, Lord of the Rings was a movie, so you had that well, big budget. Well, fair, but it, yeah. it was it so sidestepped what everybody else was doing. And in fact, I've I've heard that that it was so good and so crazy that it's the re the reason we don't get movies like that anymore is because that nobody wants to be a Lord of the Rings ripoff. Yeah, and that's fair. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm just thinking, Game of Thrones ended two years ago. <laughs> Glad you mentioned the Puff Daddy song <laughs> and. Uh, the special effects were really good and you know the dragons look good and all that stuff but if you put it up against right now with that crate dragon they they would look terrible so yeah. favreau as the director is in charge of um the the final call on that stuff but ilm does not mess around and they all do such a fantastic job including skywalker sound and sometimes like they get a lot of praise online and stuff but i think the casual general audience they like forget how many people are involved in making that stuff and making it look real. Like the Mandalorian standing in front of that thing after he hops out of it, it doesn't look awkward. It looks like he is actually standing in front of it. Like yeah. that's such a huge deal. And I, I think I'm so impressed with the visual effects on this that it's like one of those things where you had those actors saying like, oh, you're not going to Disney plus me. And now they're probably like, uh, just kidding. Let's, I do agree with this comment that. from Mick Elvis, which was my girlfriend was very displeased at the number of Banthas forcibly sacrificed for the cause. <laughs> God, yeah. I felt so bad for the Banthas. So crazy, yeah. yeah. Who, James, was it you talking about how the Bantha, like with the explosions, he's like, oh, I got an idea. And it it's like, knew. what? It knew. It was like, uh, don't look at me. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and Ma Manda's holding the rope and just like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be over soon. Yeah. yeah, it's like what? No, what? Yeah. Um. All right. Um, so I yeah, have anything else? I have one more crazy thing. This got brought up. Uh, I'm gonna throw it out to you guys. I don't know if you saw it or not. It got brought up in the uh, in our uh, Discord chat, our Patreon Discord chat. And I apologize. I can't remember who brought it up, but we had a pretty crazy discussion about it. What do you guys think? Crazy theory. Baby Yoda. And Gideon are a dyad. Uh, no. What? <laughs> what? He means more to me than you know. He needs um, him back. I'm say Wants it him. has something to do with like cloning or force powers or something. I don't know if it's a dyad relation. I I, I would be. They they've pulled from Rise of Skywalker, vice I'll versa. Before uh, I'll be with the healing. I would be, I would be only shocked. people in a dyad can heal. 
shocked the new if they bring back the dyad thing right now. Shocked. And I don't think Favreau likes biting off big themes from other people. Like he's trying to carve his own niche in Star Wars. And I get that. for him to t- take a controversial thing. This um, is the well, initial he- response from Brooke. Too many dyads. Too many dyads. Here's, Brooke, here's you're absolutely where, right. Here's what brought it into question is it was confirmed that the the only way to use the the healing technique is if you are a part of a dyad. So it proves that Baby Yoda is part of a dyad. So who is he a dyad with? So it, me. it, it me. as far as as far as we know, it already is in the Mandalorian because that was that was in order to use that technique, you have to be a dyad. Just yeah. throwing it out there. Some oh, some yeah. to toy on, chew on for the next little bit. I saw, yeah, I saw um, uh, Kendall's comment. Uh, in theory, only <laughs> members of a dyad, dyad, dyad can heal. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This might be one of the theory? best super chats ever. <laughs> from Christian Morales, thank you for the super chat. He goes, "That's gonna be a no for me, dog." That's what I'm talking about, Christian. <laughs> Randy Jackson. <laughs> All right. So before we get out Let's of see. here, for the I people like who stuck around, whether uh, you watched both that virtual red carpet while you watched with us or you just stuck with us. We appreciate it. And in honor of that, uh, let's give away one of the new Mando fan show season two shirts right now. It'll be this one right here. How right about there. That and one baby Yoda one. So you want to do it? So two, yeah, one, one, one tiny? So two winners, two winners. All right. So well, that, that changes what my plan was, but okay. We're um, winging it. All right. <laughs> So the first two people to give us the name of the characters played by Mark Booth Jr. in The Mandalorian Season 1 and Bill Burr. Only answer one of them, and the two people that get one and the first person gets the other one will win the shirt. So the Mark Booth Jr. one will be the Mando Fangio Season 2 shirt, and the uh, Bill Burr character... Uh, will be the tiny shirt. So um, let us know who gets those in the comments and I'll uh, uh, start our outro here, which is basically just thanking everybody for uh, watching along to this live stream. We hope you enjoyed the live version of the Mando Fan Show. Uh, We're going to start with our guests every week now. Uh, and joining us next week is going to be uh, Molly and Alex from Star Wars Explained. We're going to be talking about Chapter 10, and we'll be next Friday, November 6th at 8.30 p.m. East. So tell your friends that they should join you because this is a good time. And uh, you know, if you're watching this after the fact, don't worry. Uh, obviously, you're seeing that the video is going to be on the channel, and of mm-hmm. course, this is going to be on the audio feeds as well. Make sure you do subscribe to the show. Uh, you can do that on YouTube, of course, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Go to StarWarsNewsNet.com every day for all of your news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. And we're doing written reviews of The Mandalorian episodes there, too. Patreon.com slash Resistance Broadcast if you'd like to support what we do. Uh, this show does not exist at all if we don't have that support. Uh, we put a lot of time into two episodes of TRB a week in addition to the actual content we do and this show. So we thank you all so much for your support and a special thanks to our uh, generals, Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, Micah Harrison, Jenna Rosewater, Michael Gaines, Bethany, Russ Harbison, and Kendall Gellner. Thank you so much for all of your support. You are the absolute best and all of our patrons for all of your support. And of course, everyone who listens to us, watches us and shares our episodes and has fun in our yes. community. Um, thank you. Yeah, so that's it. Did we? Did anybody light up the comments uh, with uh, guesses? So uh, what were the well, correct answers? Yeah, what the, were the Ranzar Malk is uh, Mark Booth Jr.'s character, and Mayfeld uh, is. We do have a Mayfeld. One sec, scrolling up. Retcon Studios. Is that? Yep, that's it. Okay, so you win. Retcon Studios wins the uh tiny t-shirt yay yeah and i hope someone and you gets can get it in whatever size even though it's way. tiny yeah did anyone guess the other one or did i just give away the answer i think you just gave away the answer oh my gosh <laughs> then, then 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 that's it we'll just leave it at that <laughs> someone wrote the answer in but it was <laughs> Too late. Yeah. All right. Well, we gave away a tiny shirt, and that's what we do around here when we do a lot. <laughs> so, c- congratulations to Rick on, 
Thank congratulations <laughs> to Recon Studios. Um, so yeah, that is it from us. Uh, you will see us uh, on the Resistance broadcast on Monday with another episode. Uh, you could find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoeing Star Wars Dazette.com. James. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. And Lacey. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. And also keep in mind that every Friday morning, one of us will be doing a reaction short video here on YouTube yep. um, called The Mandalorian Minute. I did the first one at 4 a.m. It's quite comical to look at. Uh, so if you want to check that out, have fun with it. Um, and then also going off of what John said, Thank you to our patrons, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. I know we went through it, but just so you guys understand, we spent six hours recording yesterday, content for Patreon and our episodes and a call with our generals and admirals, which we adore and we love talking with them, which is why we do it. I then went and watched The Mandalorian at three, then recorded a video at four. Now I'm here tonight doing this. Crazy. So we Crazy. do this because of you guys. So thank you for that. Um, it means a lot to us. And please like and subscribe to YouTube, but like this video. Uh, it means a lot. Leave a comment once the chat is closed. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Uh, enjoy your weekends, and we'll see you on TRB Monday morning and next Friday on the Mando Fan Show. See you around, kids. Bye. <laughs>